Hey, let's talk about the dreaded topic, mold and your stuff. Okay, so ton of questions about this I get all the time. I will say every situation is different uh, and will be a bit nuanced and I'll touch on that. By the book, by the IICRC S520 mold remediation standards, they would say that the porous materials in a mold contaminated environment cannot be cleaned and saved, that, it should, uh, that all porous items should be thrown away. Uh, there are cleaning measures for non-porous and semi-porous. We're going to talk about that. Uh, but I will just say by the book, that's what it is. Now, where does the nuance come in? Well, what is a mold contaminated environment? How bad is it in there? What are the sensitivities? There's a lot of different factors on truly how uh, contaminated that different uh, spot is. So uh, first of all, we sort our contents into three different categories. And those three, like I said, would be non-porous, semi-porous, and porous. These can differ uh, just based on a, a lot of different things. So porous or non-porous would be, there's no uh, pores in that, uh, in that material, of course. So mold doesn't have a chance to take root in that item. Semi-porous, uh, it can take root in there. And then porous items, it will, these microscopic uh, little contaminants will get inside of there. So for the non-porous items, we'd have metal, glass, sealed wood, and other hard surfaces. When you see um, mold growing on these, if you ever have, it's usually because the dust on top of it is growing the visible mold. Um, but these can be cleaned and saved almost every time. So no need to throw away your non-porous items. They can all be cleaned in a detailed way. And then uh, semi-porous items would be more like unsealed wood, uh, some plastics, most plastics, uh, concrete even. And these can be cleaned and saved most times unless they have been significantly water damaged, have a lot of growth in them. We might need to do a lot more uh, aggressive type of cleaning on it. Refer to my mold removal video uh, for how to clean these items and how to remove the mold off or out of them. Uh, like I've said, mold is like a microscopic plant or tree, so it will take root in these uh, pores. And so that's why the cleaning might need to be a little bit more in depth on the wood and plastic. Now the porous items, okay? This is your drywall. If drywall has visible mold growth on it, it's gotta get taken out, completely removed. Um, upholstery, clothing, paper, cardboard, uh, carpets and insulation, etc. okay? So porous items has a chance, not just for mold to be growing in or on it, but also uh, the small particulates landing in and getting into those uh, porous items. So this is where we need to make some decisions. Maybe it's time to do a spring cleaning anyway, and let's just get rid of anything that uh, that is maybe in question. And then we're left with what's behind. This is what I help people with on a case by case situation, because if there's not uh, much mold sensitivity, if the mold situation is not crazy, you know, contaminated with uh, a lot of different um, sources throughout the home and things like that, it's tough to exactly measure what is on every single porous item. And so we just do the best with what we can with, with what is within reason. So um, porous items is where we need to make those decisions and uh, see what we need to dispose. So clothing, for instance, if it's in a moldy environment that, um, that was very, very humid, really highly contaminated, it might not be able to get clean. Maybe you can't get that musty smell out. Um, but also if it's just in the house somewhere and we don't really know how much is on there, that's when you would add an EC3 laundry additive um, to your laundry, maybe do it a few loads over and not have to get rid of you know, all your clothing that way. Uh, when we talk about these, these cleaning steps, uh, what do I mean by cleaning? HEPA vacuum, damp wipe down, HEPA vacuum again, and probably repeating that process so that we get uh, these areas about as dust free as possible because this stuff is micro, microscopic. So we got to get that stuff out. For the um, you know, semi-porous and non-porous stuff that might have little nooks and crannies and, and hard to reach areas, maybe within cabinets or dressers and things like that, you might need to use an air compressor to blow that stuff you know, out. And that might be best to do outside uh, or ask your remediator who's doing the content cleaning uh, to do that. Maybe there's use of peroxide solution, other um, manners of you know, taking some of that stuff off. Again, refer to my mold uh, removal video. The porous items uh, is, you know, to me, the best bang for our buck as far as like um, what, what return on our investment we're gonna get from a health standpoint is porous items that we're gonna be around a lot, okay? So do I think that you know one of your boxes that have some memoirs and pictures and things or a few books in it, do I think that's the thing that's gonna really mess your health up? Hard to say, right? 
uh, probably not as much as a mattress that you're sleeping six to eight hours a night on. So the mattresses, the couches are probably gonna be the best uh, return on our investment as far as getting new ones on that. Um, when I, I'm talking about cleaners here, basic dish soap and water is actually very effective for cleaning. So we don't need to get too you know, um, focused on a specific like magic solution or magic potion here. Uh, for the damp wipe down and the maintenance cleaning, that's where companies like CitraSafe, BioBalance, EC3, and Benefect are really good options, okay? Those are really good non-toxic cleaners. Um, and our goal is mold removal like we talked about in the previous video. So these are just great maintenance uh, companies that just are, are have great quality in all that they do. Hope this helps a bit. I know it's not gonna answer every question. I know your situation is gonna be a little bit different and I offer one-on-one -on -one consultations for that so that we really determine what building materials needs to be removed in this process based on our remediation plan, based on whatever inspection or testing we've done. And when we come down to the content section, um, how do we most thoroughly clean and save these things? And then with the porous items, what should we dispose of versus what could we clean and save? And that's a case by case scenario. I uh, hope this helps and it probably is gonna uh, cause a lot more questions to be asked. So bring them on.